And I need you to touch me, Lord Touch my mind, my heart, my life, my Lord So we're here again with Lisa Morris, who is the president of the Sacred Heart Apostolate. And the two major parts of the apostolate that will touch the average person mm -hmm. would be the parish mission and then the enthronement of the Sacred right. Heart. So Lisa, why do a parish mission? This is the 21st century. Why do one? Well, there's lots of different reasons as I think about that. One is um, the families right now are so in need of the love and the mercy and, and just the heart of Jesus um, in a world that's pretty chaotic right now and so unsettled, Jesus is the rock. And when you bring that into the heart of Jesus, publicly saying, Jesus, I make you king of my family, the graces that come in are immeasurable. I, they're not, they are tangible, but you can't, it goes beyond anything. It's kind of like the Eucharist, you know, the, the graces of the Eucharist are immeasurable. And that's what happens with the enthronement. When somebody commits to Jesus, his generosity won't be outdone. And I think I've seen it in families where you do the enthronement and the promises of the Sacred Heart as given to St. Margaret Mary um, become a reality. And as you see it over and over. One of the promises is, I will bless every place where a picture of my heart is exposed and honored. And that's simply putting the picture you know, up in a prominent place in your home and making that covenant with him, Jesus, I make you king. And when you assent to that and just do it, even unknown, I know in my family, my husband was a little bit unsure to do this, but he said yes to doing it. And the graces that have flown, flown in or grown in our family because of that decision, um, you know, sometimes it's just the ascent of faith doing doing the enthronement. And so I think the enthronement builds families, which again builds communities, which builds the nation, which builds the world. So I think one heart at a time, making Jesus king, and then spreading that to others about his love and his mercy um, can change the world, really. Tell us more about the parish mission. How would a parishioner or a parish mm -hmm. set up such a mission? Oh, that's a great question. So the first thing would be to just set up an appointment with your parish priest and see if you could talk with him for even, you know, 10 minutes. It wouldn't take long. Just to kind of share about the apostolate and what it could do for the parish. The healing and the restoration for families, the parish, the joy the, the mission brings, um, the promises of the Sacred Heart of the Twelve Promises um, come to fruition through the missions. So setting it up, it would be first to get the approval of the parish priest, and then uh, Father Gaffney or one of the people from the Apostolate would come to the parish to go over the pre-mission planning, which is very simple, nothing you know, hard about that at all. Um, and the parish priest would be assured that this mission wouldn't be more taxing on him. We want to make sure that the priest knows that this is a gift for his parish. It's a free will, or it's a free, um, it's a free parish. We come, there's no cost to the parish, no cost to the priest. Each night we take up a collection, and that money goes to fund the mission. But as far as the priest's involvement, I think I really want to stress that because priests are so incredibly busy, the last thing they need is one more thing to do. So we want to make sure that they know that this is going to be bring a lot of fruit to their parish and the diocese, and that we just want to come and give this to their parish. Okay. Tell me more about that pre-mission meeting. What does mm -hmm. that entail? We have an actual packet that's laid out that says, you know, exactly some of the steps that could be taken. If there's a school involved, one of the things that's really powerful is the kids hear about the mission, the parish mission coming, and they're asked to make maybe a little sacrifice, um, maybe help wash the dishes or not fight with their sibling. And they make a picture, draw a picture of what they're going to give to in preparation for this parish mission for it to be a success. And then those pictures are placed on the wall in the church or the school. And we did that at Sacred Heart. And it was, I mean, we had pictures all over. 
And it was really pretty hilarious, some of the sacrifices. <laughs> it, I mean, and I thought, you know, praise be to God, the gift of these kids. And honestly, you know, I know that that is one of the reasons why that mission at Sacred Heart was so successful, was the sacrifice of these kids. So again, that's a simple thing that can be done that's so powerful to facilitate, to make sure that the mission is a success. And how long is the mission itself? That can be customized um, depending on what the parish priest wants. If he wants a three-day, we can do a three-day. If he wants two days or even a one-day. Um, typically, it starts, um, to, it can start any day, but it's usually 7 to 8.30 each night. So it can be, again, customized to whatever that fits the needs of the parish. And what about the follow-up? What happens after the mission is complete? We leave with um, having a, a core, at the end of the two or three day mission, there's typically a group of people who sign up that want to help facilitate beyond, our, beyond the mission. Mm -hmm. So those people, we leave them with everything they need to do to help enthronement start happening. And then it just, like I said, from here permeates throughout the diocese. So you're describing a parish mission that is not very stressful for a priest. No. And that it can be very inspiring for a parish and not especially expensive, no. apart from the free will offering. So it sounds like a win-win for anyone oh, who is. decides to do a mission at their parish. Amen. Thank you. Touch me, Lord. Touch my mind, my heart.